Hey, welcome to Analytics Unleashed. I'm Robert Christensen, your host today. Thank you for joining us. Today, we have three quick wins that drive big gains in the enterprise workloads. And today we have Olaf with Ericsson. We have John with OROC and we have Dragon with DXC. Welcome. Thank you for joining me, gentlemen. Yeah, good to be here. Thank you. Good to have you. Hey, so Olaf, let's start off with you. What big problems are you trying to solve today that are doing for those quick wins? What are you trying to do today, top of, top of mind? Yeah, when, when we started looking into these microservices uh, for our uh, financial platform, we immediately saw the challenges that we have. And we wanted to have a strong partner. Uh, and we have a good relationship with uh, HP before. So we turned to HP because we know that they have the uh, technical support that we need, the possibilities that we need in our platform uh, to fulfill our requirements and also the reliability that we would need. So... Tell me, I think this is really important. You guys are starting into a digital wallet space, is that correct? Yeah, that, that's correct. So we are in a financial platform. Uh, so we are yeah. spanning uh, across the world and delivering our financial services uh, to our end customers. <clears throat> well, that's not classically what you hear about Ericsson diving into. What's really started you guys down that path and specifically these big wins around this digitization? No, what, what, what we could see early was that uh, we have a mobile networks, right? So we have a lot of oh. a strong user base within them, uh, both uh, kind of networks. Mm -hmm. And in the, where we started in the emerging markets, uh, you normally have a lot of unbanked people. And that people was the, the ones that you want to target. So be able to, instead of going down and use your cash, for example, to buy your fruits or your electricity bill, et cetera, you could use your mobile wallet. And, mm -hmm. and that's how it all started. And now, now we're also turning into the emerged markets also like the Western side, part of worlds, et cetera. That's fantastic. And I, hey, I want to talk to John here. John's with OROC and he's the, one of those early adopters of those container platforms for the, uh, in the United States here, the federal government. Tell us a little bit about that program and how, what's going on with that, John. Yeah, sure, absolutely, appreciate it. Yeah, so with OROC, what we've done is we developed one of the first FedRAMP authorized container platforms that runs in our moderate and soon to be high cloud. And what that does is building on the Israel platform gave us the capability of offering customers, both commercial as well as federal, the capability and the flexibility of running their workloads in a, you know, as a service model where they can customize. And typically what customers have to do is they have to either build it internally or if they go to the cloud, they have to be able to take what resources are available and then tweak to those designs to make what they need. So in this architecture built on open source and with our own infrastructure, we offer you know, very low cost, zero egress capability, but the, also the workload processing that they would need to run data analytics, machine language, and other types of high performance processing that typically they would need as we move forward in this computer age. So, John, you, you touched on a topic that I think is really critical, and, and you had mentioned open source. Why is open source a key aspect for this transformation that we're seeing coming up in the, like the next decade? Yeah, sure. Yeah, with open source, we shifted early on in the company to move to open source only to offer the flexibility. We didn't want to be uh, set on one particular platform to operate within. So when we took and built the cloud infrastructure, we went with open source as an open architecture that we can scale and grow within. Uh, because of that, uh, we were one of the very first FedRAMP authorizations built on open source, not on a specific platform. Mm. And what we've seen from that is the increased uh, performance capability that we would get, as well as the flexibility to add additional components that typically you don't get on other platforms. So it was, a, it was a good move we went with and uh, one that the customer will definitely benefit from. And that's, that's huge actually, because performance leads to better cost and better cost leads to better performance around that. I, I'm just super, super happy with all the advanced work that you all are doing there. It's fantastic. And Dragon, so, so you're in a space that I think is really interesting. You're dealing with what everybody likes to talk about, and that's autonomous vehicles, you're working with automobile manufacturers, you're, and you're dealing with data at a scale that is unprecedented. Can you just open that door for us to talk to about these big, big uh, wins that you're trying to get over the line with these enterprises? Yeah, absolutely. And um, uh, thank you, Robert. Uh, we approach uh, uh, leveraging Esmeral from the uh, data fabric angle. We pr practically have a fully integrated 
the Esmeral data fabric into our robotic drive solution. Uh, mm. Robotic drive solution is actually a game changer, as you mentioned, in accelerating the development of autonomous driving vehicles. It's a, an end-to-end -end hyperscale machine learning and AI platform, as I mentioned, based on the uh, Esmeral data fabric, which is used by the, some of the largest manufacturers in the world for development of their autonomous driving algorithms. And I think we all in technology and following up at the same type of news and uh, research right across the globe in, in, in this area. So we're pretty proud that uh, we are one of the uh, leaders in actually providing um, hyperscale uh, machine learning platforms for uh, kind manufacturers. Um, some of them I cannot talk about, but uh, BMW is one of, uh, one of the current manufacturers that we uh, uh, provide uh, this type of solutions. And they have publicly spoken about their uh, D3 platform, uh, data-driven development platform. Uh, just to give you an idea um, to, to, of the scale, uh, as Robert mentioned, uh, daily we collect over 1.5 petabytes of data, of raw data. Did you daily. say daily? Daily. Yeah, daily. Um, wow. The storage capacity is over 250 petabytes and growing. Uh, there's over 100,000 cores and over 200 GPUs in the, uh, in, in the compute area. Um, over 50, 50 petabytes uh, of data is delivered every two weeks into a hardware in loop right, for testing. And we have daily uh, thousands of engineers and data scientists accessing uh, the relevant data and developing machine learning models on the daily basis, right? Mm -hmm. Part of it is the simulation, right? Simulation cuts uh, the cost as well as the uh, time, right, for developing of the autonomous uh, uh, driving algorithms. And uh, uh, the, the simulations are taking probably 75% of the research uh, that's being done on this platform. That's amazing, Greg. I, 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 it is more amazing. I, the more I get involved with that, and I've been part of these conversations with a number of the folks that are involved with it, I, I computer science meant me, my geekiness, my little propeller head starts coming out, and it just blows my mind. And I think, so I'm going to pivot back over to Olaf. Olaf, so you're talking about something that is a global network of financial services. Okay? Yeah, correct. And the flow of transactional, typically non-relational transactional data flows, to actual transactions going through you have issues of potential fraud, you have issues of safety, and you have multi-geographic regional problems with data and data privacy. How are you guys addressing that today? So, so to answer that question, uh, today we, we have, have managed to solve that using the container platform to, together with the data fabric. Uh, mm -hmm. But as, as you say, we, we need to span across uh, different regions. We need to have the data as secure as possible because we have a lot of legal aspects to look into because if our data disappears uh, but your money is also disappearing so it's a really important area for us with the security and the reliability of the platforms so so that's why we also went this way to make sure that we we have a strong partner that could help us with this because just looking at where we are deployed in in more than 23 countries today and, and we uh, is processing more than 900 million US dollars per day in our systems currently. So it is a lot of money passing through and you need to take security in a, in a in, it's, as it's a very important point, right? It really is, it really is. And so uh, John, I mean, you're, you're, you uh, obviously are dealing with, you know, a lot of folks that have three letters as acronyms around the government agencies <laughs> and uh, they range in various degrees in certain, uh, uh, of security. When you say FedRAMP, I mean, what, could you just uh, articulate why the Esmeral platform was something that you selected to go to that FedRAMP compliant container platform? Because I think that's, that, that kind of speaks to the, to the industrial strength of what we're talking about. Yeah, it all comes down to being able to offer a product that's secure that the customers can trust. And when we went with FedRAMP, FedRAMP has very stringent security requirements that have monthly POAMs, which are performance reviews and, and updates that need to be done, if not on a daily basis, but on a monthly basis. So the customers, there's a lot that goes on behind the scenes that they don't are able to articulate. And what by selecting the HP Esmeral platform for containers, um, one of the key strengths that we looked at was the Esmeral fabric. And it, it's all about the data. It's all about securing the data, moving the data, 
transferring the data. And from a customer's perspective, they want to be able to operate in an environment that they can trust, no different than being able to turn on their lights or making sure there's water in their utilities. You know, containers with the Esmeral platform built on OROC's infrastructure gives that capability. BedRamp enables the security tied to the platform that we're able to follow. So it's government uh, guided, which includes NIST and many and over hundreds of controls that typically, you know, the customers don't have time or the capability to address. So our commercial customers benefit, our federal customers, you know, that you discussed, they're able to follow and check the box to meet those requirements. And the container platform gives us a capability where now we're able to move files, uh, which we hear about through the Esmo fabric, and then we're able to run the workloads in the containers themselves and give isolation. And the security element of, of Fed wrapping Esmeral gave us that capability in order to paint that environment FedRAMP authorized that the customers benefit from, from security. So they have confidence in running their workloads, using their data, uh, and able to focus on their core job at hand and not worry about their infrastructure. It's a fundamental requirement, isn't it? That, that isolation between that compute and storage and going up a layer there in, in a way that provides them a set of services that they can I wouldn't say set it and forget it, but really had the confidence that what they're getting is the best performance for the dollars that they're spending. Uh, John, I, exactly. I, my hat's off to what the work that you all do in there. Thank you. We appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. And, and Dragon, I, wanna, I wanted to pivot a little bit here because you are primarily the, the operator of what I consider one of the largest data fabrics on the, on the planet, for that matter. Um, and I, I just want to talk a little bit about the openness of our architecture, right? Of all of the multiple protocols that we support that allow for, you know, you know, some people may have selected a different set of application deployment models and virtualization models that allow to plug into the data fabric. You know, it, uh, can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, and I, I think um, in my mind, right, um, to operate uh, such a uh, data fabric at scale, right? Um, there were three key elements that we were looking for, right? Uh, that we found in uh, Esmeral Data Fabric, right? Uh, the first one was uh, speed, cost, and scalability, right? Uh, the second one was the uh, globally distributed data lake or ability to distribute data uh, globally. And the third uh, was certainly uh, the strength of our partnership uh, with, uh, with HP in this case, right? So if you look at the uh, uh, Esmeral data fabric, it's, it's fast, it's cost effective, and it's certainly highly scalable because we, as you just mentioned, stretch the uh, sort of the capabilities of the, uh, uh, the data fabric to hundreds of petabytes and uh, um, over a million the data points, if you will. And uh, it important, what was important for us was that the Esmeral data fabric actually eliminates the uh, need for multiple vendor solutions, which would be otherwise required, right? Because uh, it, it provides integrated file system database or, or a data lake, right? And the data management on top of it, right? Usually you would probably need to incorporate multiple tools, right? <laughs> From uh, uh, different vendors. And the file system itself, it's, it's so important, right? when you're uh, working at scale like this, right? Uh, and honestly, in our research, maybe there are three file systems in the world that can support uh, this kind of uh, size of the, of the data fabric. Uh, the distributed data lake was also important to us. Uh, and the reason for that is you can imagine that, that these large car manufacturers are testing uh, and have testing vehicles all around the world, right? They're not just doing it locally around the uh, uh, their data, um, their IT centers, right? <laughs> uh, so uh, collecting the data and this 1.5 petabytes example, right, uh, for, for BMW on a daily basis, it's, it's, it's really challenging unless you have <laughs> the ability to actually leverage the data in a distributed data lake fashion, right? So um, data can basically reside in different data centers globally or even on-premise and in cloud environments, which became uh, very important later because a lot of these uh, um, car manufacturers actually have OEMs, right? <laughs> that would like to get either portions of the data or get access to the data in, a, in different environments, not necessarily in the data center. Um, and uh, truly, I think uh, 
to build something at this scale, right? Uh, you, you need a strong partner. And we certainly had that uh, in HP. And uh, uh, we got the comprehensive support, right, for the, for the software. Um, but, but more importantly, I think a partner that clearly understood uh, criticality of the uh, data fabric, right, and the need for the fast, uh, fast response, right, to our clients. And, uh, you know, jointly, I think we met all the challenges and in so doing, I think we made the Esmeralda data fabric uh, a much better and stronger uh, product over the, over the last uh, few years. That's fantastic. Thank you, Dragon, appreciate it. Uh, hey, so I think we're gonna wrap up here. Any last words, uh, Olaf, do you wanna share with us? No, uh, looking forward now in, from our perspective on helping out with the COVID-19 situation that mm -hmm. we have, uh, enabling people to still be in the market without actually touching each other and, and, and leaving may, maybe for the actual market and being at home, et cetera, doing those transactions. That's great, thank you. John, any last comments? Yeah, thanks. Yeah, uh, look for a, a joint offering announcement coming out between HPE and OROC where we're gonna be offering Sandbox as a service where the data analytics and machine language where people can actually test drive the actual environment as a service and uh, if they like it, then they can move into a production-wise environment. So stay tuned for that. That's great, John. Thank you for that. And hey, Dragon, last words? Yeah, last words. Um, we're pretty happy what we have um, done already for car manufacturers. We're taking this solution, right, in terms of the uh, uh, distributed data-like uh, capabilities, as well as the uh, uh, hyperscale machine learning and AI platform to other industries. And um, we hope to do it jointly with you. Well, we hope that you do it with us as well. So thank you very much, everybody. Gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we appreciate you. it. <laughs> thank all you right. very much. Thank you very much. Hey, this is Robert Christensen with Analytics Unleashed. I want to thank all of our guests here today, and we'll catch you next time. Thank you for joining us. Bye-bye.